Rosalind's transformation. So I'm going to say nothing more now because Rosalind's story is one that you, I know you're all really going to enjoy. So I'll let her take it away. And thanks for being here, Rosalind. Okay. Thank you for inviting me. Hello, everyone. My name is Rosalind Kuehl and I am a certified ketogenic health coach. I'm also a nutritional coach from the Institute of Integrity, Integrative Nutrition. And um, I've been on this journey for a very long time, very long time. Uh, as a preteen, I started to put on weight as I went through puberty and my largest was 300 pounds. So um, I, my mother was very, very athletic. Uh, still is, and I always had a problem with food. I was an emotional eater, and I would sneak food as a child, I, but I exercised, so I was always physically fit, um, but when I had my second child, I was 30 years old, and um, I wasn't feeling good at all. And I was at my highest at that point. And I remember um, I went out one evening, I love to dance, and I went out one evening and my home had 13 steps that I had to climb. And it took me 20 minutes to a half an hour to get from the bottom to the top. And that was an eye opener for me because I was very young, I had a young baby and um, I was like, this is, this is not gonna be right, this is not good. I went to my doctor because I was um, in a lot of pain. And my doctor said to me, listen, um, I was 34 at that time. And he said to me, he says, if you don't lose the weight, you're gonna need me and hip replacements in five years. And that scared me. It really scared me. So I decided, okay, I need to stop. I, I just ate everything under the sun and carbs and sugar were absolutely my favorite. I loved potato, I loved pasta um, and sugary drinks. Um, a lot of my weight came on just by drinking sugary drinks. Um, and it, that just was my life. So I had gastric bypass, I had the real Y um, 18 years ago. And I, did, I was successful, I lost a hundred pounds. However, I never was able to sustain that um, because of my mindset. So I will, I will go up 25 pounds, come down 25 pounds, go back up. So it was a yo-yo of that 25 pounds. Um, I would say about, uh, five years ago, five or six years ago, um, I saw someone and I saw that they had lost weight. And I said, you know, how did you do this? And they said, oh, I do the keto diet. You know, it's very low carbs um, and no sugar. Hmm. I was like, no, that's not for me. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not doing that. I love my carbs and I love my sugar. But I really wanted to get that extra 25 pounds off. So, um, when I, you know, you get to a point where you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I, I start looking up the keto diet and I, st I started it. And I was like, this is amazing. The inches came off before the, the pounds. And this is what I try to tell people when I'm coaching them to stay off the scale because the inches will melt, the fat will melt before the pounds because if you're if you're physical physically active you know the muscle weighs more than the fat so the scale is not going to move right away so I tell people stay off the scale and um, I had to rely on thrift shops because the inches were coming off so fast that every three weeks I was going down a size and I, I had to I had to find a way of getting a new wardrobe without spending a whole lot of money. And I realized that because this is my journey and I also tell people, don't be afraid to lose the weight because you feel that you can't do something else. Um, we have to find ways of making it work. 
So the thrift shop was, it, it still is my best friend, you know? Um, so I, I kept doing the keto diet. I would do the bulletproof coffee in the morning. I would have my protein. I have my protein snacks, um, like olives and avocado and cheese. And I, and I love Italian meat. So I eat Italian meat and that would be my snack, boiled eggs. Um, and for my dinner, I would have a, a good dinner. You know, I would have um, cauliflower rice and, and I love to make mashed potatoes, but it's not mashed potatoes. <laughs> and, um, and I did things like I became very creative with my meat options. Um, and my, my sister said to me, she says, um, you know, you're doing this and you're doing, you, you're, well, you're doing very well with it. Why don't you get certified? And I remember saying to her, I don't have time for this. I really don't. And I thought about it. I said, if this is what it's doing for me, if I'm healing my body from the inside out, I want to help others to feel the same way that I'm feeling. And I became certified. Then I started saying, okay, well, I love to cook. I come from a family of cooks. I love to cook. I said, okay, I'm going to start a business in cooking and showing people how to eat it. Um, I'm a person, I don't like bland food. My food has to be very, very flavorful. Otherwise, I will get bored very quickly. And I just did my research and I researched desserts because I, I do know that a lot of people have a sweet tooth. So I researched desserts. And everything that I researched, I put my own hand in it. So somebody else could say, oh, I know what that recipe is like. And I'm like, yes, I do too. But I twist it a little bit. So it becomes my own. And that's how my business bloomed. And this is my lifestyle. It's a journey. It's not a race. It's um, something that you have to have the mindset for. However, once you get into it, your, your body does not recognize carbs anymore. So what I do is for the, for the keto lifestyle, it actually consists of 75% of healthy fats. When I say healthy fats, we're looking at nuts. We're looking at avocado. We're looking at avocado oil. We're looking at coconut oil and butter and the, the fats from the meat. And then you have 20% of protein. And I tell people all the time, um, the Atkins diet and the ketogenic diet, they're not one of the same because if you eat too much protein, that will actually turn to sugar. So you can't eat, overeat your protein. <clears throat> and then you have your 5% of your carbs and that will come from your vegetables. And a lot of the vegetables consist of green vegetables, um, cauliflower, mushrooms, radishes, um, broccoli, eggplant, all sorts of things. I, I like to mix up things. Um, of course, um, string beans. Um, I use red onions. I use scallions. Uh, just a very little amount of carrots. Um, so I, I do a variety of things. Um, and, you know, I, and I tell people, even if you fall, don't beat yourself up. Pick yourself up and keep moving because it's not about, oh, I need to get to this weight at a certain time. It's about normalizing your weight for the rest of your life. So I, I really, really love to help people do this. I help to, I, I love to coach people. I like to let them know that I'm on the exact journey as they are. I know exactly what it feels like to try to lose a large amount of weight. I said to people, if someone says to me, oh, um, I want to lose 20 pounds because I want to be in carnival. Okay, fine. But what are you going to do after that? Are you going to go back to carbs? Are you going to start putting inflammation back into your body because that's what carbs does? That's up to you. But if you want a lifestyle of being healthy and feeling good, having energy, being able to move around, getting the inflammation out of your body, reversing type 2 diabetes, helping with certain cancers, 
uh, depression, uh, different neurological dis disorders, mental disorders, um, epilepsy, because that's where it came from. The keto diet is not a fair. The keto diet was invented in 1920. And it was, it was um, Dr. Russell Wilder at the Mayo Clinic. He was doing this because he realized that children that had epilepsy, they, if you took the carbs out of their diet, then their neurological transmitters would slow down. So they're not firing off where they're having these seizures. Also, it also became an issue of, um, it ended up being weight loss. And I will say this, a lot of people don't realize this. We are born into ketosis. We are born into ketosis. A child that is born and breastfed, the first three days is cholesterol. That's total fat. And then the milk comes through. So this is nothing that is, is new. This is what happens from the day that we are born. So it's not like um, people say, oh, well, it's just something that just popped up. No, it's not. It's been a lifestyle for many people for many years. Our bodies don't need carbohydrates. Our bodies need energy. Fat is used for energy, not glucose. Glucose, unfortunately, can be a poison to our body. All different types of sugars could be a poison to our body. Cancer feeds off a of poison. Off of, off of cancer, um, sugar, I'm sorry, diabetes feeds off of sugar. So inflammation feeds off of sugar. You know, the neurological disorders feeds off of sugar. So that's all I have to say. Like, I, I, I can't say that I'm perfect, but I will say this. If I even try to eat carbohydrates at this point, I will be sick. And I know that. So I would rather feel healthy than to feel sick. Thank you for listening. Well, Rosalind, uh, thank you for sharing. And sorry, I've got a buzz here. But, um, you know, just a few points, you know, you sh it's, it's wonderful. You went through the science and, you know, Rosalind, and, and this is the thing that I like a lot, you know, is when we make a lifestyle change, we want to learn. And the more information you learn, the more empowered you become and you want to learn more and you mm -hmm. realize I don't need a doctor. I don't need somebody else to, to tell me these things because I'm sure Rosalind, what you've researched and what you know is a lot more than the majority of physicians, what they mm -hmm. know about the ketogenic diet. You mm -hmm. know, we know a ketogenic diet is a therapeutic, it's therapeutic ketosis. And this yes. is what I, I talk to people about that. It is instead of giving you a prescription for a weight loss drug, you know, and which is what some people like, there's the big O drug that's out there these mm -hmm. days, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm yes. like, you wanna take this, but what if you taught your body to go back to its natural state and you allowed it to adjust to those things on its own? And mm -hmm. we know that there's science and that there's safety in it. So it's mm -hmm. wonderful to hear you speak of those things. But one question I had for you was, when you talk about kind of inflammation in your body, can you tell people what it was like, you know, as you started losing that weight because mm -hmm. you were having trouble getting up and down the stairs, what are the changes that you noticed about the way that you felt as the weight started coming off? Well, I will say this, my, my um, joints didn't hurt as much anymore. The brain fog, like there are times when you feel like, oh, I just can't concentrate. I can't keep things together. That disappeared. It was like, oh my goodness, I can, I can actually focus now. Um, the energy, I was buzzing around. Like, like I, I couldn't even believe that I had that type of energy. Um, when I do my workouts, and, and I will tell you, I don't work out as much as I should, but when I do, the, my energy level is amazing, okay? Um, Things like sleeping, I sleep better. Um, I, I can be in a rest state without stressing. I, I don't stress as much. 
I, I used to, I used to um, suffer from depression. And I'm going to give you this story. It may sound far-fetched, but I, I need people to understand. Depression, anxiety is real. It is real. So this is what happened to me. I used to be on Xanax because Xanax used to put me to sleep. I, I just needed it to go to sleep because my mind always raced. So I have a cat and my cat got sick. And when my cat came home, they gave me medication for this cat. However, the medication was very high and my cat had a bad reaction to it. So I took the cat back to the vet and something, something just said to me, Google this, this name of this cat this medication for this cat, it was Xanax. And I ended up taking it because I didn't want to go back to the doctor. I took my cat's medication. That's how bad it was before I started keto. And I am just like, I, I have to tell stories like this because it's real. It's real. I don't have depression like that anymore. I don't have anxiety attacks like that anymore. You know, because I maintain my fat intake. I, I really do like, I have my MCT oil. I have my coconut oil. I use my fats in my food. I use butter. I use avocado oil. Um, my body, I tell people when they, to start out with MCT oil to do one tablespoon a, a day and then increase it to two tablespoons, you know, and that, that actually, it helps with the, the, the mental illness because it is such a day you know people tend to throw it under the rug and brush it under the rug but it's real and this this diet or this lifestyle because I don't call it a diet because diets die this lifestyle is it has caused me to have a second chance of life it really has well thanks Rosalind for sharing and you know the story of depression and a lot of people come in to see me and, you know, they say, you know, I just get cravings all the time or they have addictions. Mm -hmm. But this, So a ketogenic diet helps with those addictions because yes. you retrain your brain, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Overcome. And so how, like for you, because that's the biggest thing. People say, I'm, addic I'm addicted to carbs. I'm never coming off them. Well, I, I will say this. Um, when I first started, I went in slow. Uh, I would say for me, it took me three weeks. And then I look back and I say, wait a minute, hold up. Um, I don't feel like there's French fries anymore. Oh, um, this, 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 this pasta, I can't eat this. It's making me feel bad. So you kind of see, you can feel the difference in your body, how it rejects it. Because then you become like, for me, I would get extremely gassy and bloated. If I, eat, if I eat carbs, I have a belt that I wear. And if I eat a piece of carb, I will go, my belt has five notches. I can get to four and a half notches on this belt. If I eat a piece of carb, I will go right back to number one. That's how bad it is. So I always keep this belt on when I have on pants that have loops because I'm like, you know you can't eat a carb because that belt is going to expand. And I, so I, I'm very mindful. You, I, I'm very mindful of how my body feels. I, I check in. I have to check in with myself. And it's great that you have those kind of little, it's like a barometer, you know, when mm -hmm. things are off. And, mm -hmm. but just to speak a moment about, about carbs, like the one thing to know as well is, you know, everyone is, we, some of us have genetic predispositions as well. Mm -hmm. yes. Like you said, and we know that like uh, um, insulin receptors in our body, some people don't absorb them well, right? So yes. carbs, they don't mm -hmm. break them down, right. and so, which is why, like you said, some people that think that keto is a quick fix, but if you are genetically programmed to be that way, then a ketogenic or low carb needs to become a lifestyle for you. It does. It does. And that's, and that's why last night it was funny at my group, because I did my first little cooking class at the Diabetes Center, but we had people, eight people around the table. They were all different shapes and sizes. There were slimmer people there, 
but they yes. still had insulin resistance yes. because they had the genetic predisposition to it. So, exactly. so it is different for everyone. Does everyone need ketosis? No, but I'm bringing this here. Number one, as you know, my story was that I used to have sugar cravings all the time and I couldn't go. I would get very hungry if I didn't eat. And when I adapted a ketogenic uh, diet and I did a few different rounds of ketogenic uh, nutrition, then my body adapted. And now it's amazing because I can go and I don't get those sugar cravings. So mm -hmm. I train my body to adapt. Okay. Yes. So um, it's really important to know that we can be transformed. And I think that's one of our, our big takeaways. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to just put in one more point and then I'll open it to some questions from the floor. But the other thing, Rosalind, okay, because I know when I first started keto back in 2012 versus mm -hmm. if I were to go and do, when I go back into ketosis now, the things I've learned, because mm -hmm. there are ways that you can go into a ketogenic nutrition by doing it a safer way so that you don't get the brain fog and the cramps and the constipation. So if you can just talk a little bit about that, because as you're now coaching people, it mm -hmm. really makes a difference, right? When you start out, because there are a few things that you really need to get started. Okay, so first of all, your water intake is very important, very important. And I also tell people, when, when I first started ketosis, being in ketosis, I will get leg cramps, some really bad leg cramps. So I tell people to up their magnesium and the potassium. So, um, and in potassium, I'm not saying because we don't eat bananas and things like that. So you up your greens and you get your fiber out of your greens. And then um, I tell people to, if, if they feel that they can come off of carbs right away, eat something like spaghetti squash, eat something like a small piece of um, sweet potato, you know, instead of going for the, the Irish potato or, the um, regular pumpkin because that has a lot of um, carbs in it. It's, it turns to sugar. Um, I also tell people um, when I first started out, to be honest, I, I loved soda. So what I tell people to do is either drink uh, something like sparkling ice or even the, um, and it may sound bad, but it worked for me. I started off drinking Coke Zero or Sprite Zero. And then what happens is those cravings start to change and you're able to drink something like sparkling ice or flavored water. You know, um, I tell people to, to stay off of alcohol for a while because I want their bodies to regulate without having that spike in, in the alcohol. Um, I also say to them that um, because I do the, the desserts, I would, I would say instead of them looking at a chocolate or something like that, you know, they can order desserts. So I try to advise them not to deprive themselves, but to modify in a different manner. You know, um, when it comes to their fruit, I ask them to stick to their berries because that will also help to bring their carbs down, but they're still getting that sweetness in their mouth. I, I teach them um, what sugar substitutes to use as well. Um, like monk fruit, trivia, stevia, erythritol, elios. I, I teach them to read their labels. You know, at this point, I'm actually doing um, a grocery shopping tour. I do that now to teach people. I, I want them to see in the grocery store what they can have and what they can't have, because I find that if they have a piece of paper, they're not really sure with what the paper's saying to what they're looking at in the grocery store. And I teach them how to read their labels so that they know how to count their carbs and take their fiber away from the carbs to give them that carb. So I, I try to um, put all that into perspective for them. So as you can see, Rosalind has a ton of information, you know, and, you know, working with someone as you go through this, number one, work if you're on medications, you know, some individuals that are here now, because during this two week, they're eating carbs to see how their body responds. But, you know, ketosis, therapeutic ketosis can be a way for you to overcome insulin resistance. Yes. It may not, and it may not have to be forever, but I say even for me, it's six weeks 
to allow mm-hmm. the body. We know that because it's in many ways, when we go into ketosis, it's like fasting. And people have asked a lot, Rosalind, about fasting before. And, um, but we know that it is therapy. So, uh, mm-hmm. so a six-week ketogenic diet can be therapy for you, okay? Mm-hmm. But the reason I say to also speak with your physician is if you're on blood sugar pills or if you're on blood pressure pills, they go away. Like literally within two weeks, you can be mm-hmm. off of some of your medications. Mm-hmm. So um, yes, so that's a combination. So what I'm going to do now, okay, we've got a few questions coming through. So folks, if you'd like to put a few things in the chat, because honestly, Rosalind and I could talk all night and we're not <laughs> even talking about baking because what she makes are just like the most delicious food. And so, I've added more to it as well. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've got your inspiration. So thank you thank from you. one of our viewers. Um, thank you. And, and we have Tammy that says the inflammation in her knees is gone down for her just in the past three days being in ketosis mm-hmm. so she's gone back in keto and it's mm-hmm. so true right and you you see it with your clients I saw it I remember in my group and it was in literally the first week I had someone with bad knee arthritis and it's like within a week she's walking up and down the stairs without needing mm-hmm. any Tylenol. right what drug can I give you that's not going to have side effects that's but right a, a ketogenic diet right that's um, right and then we have someone else that's saying this uh, gives me um, that you give me hope for success that you've had in reducing your inflammation, right? Mm, wonderful. And it's so true. And, you know, we see now there's so many things. There's all these autoimmune drugs that are coming out. And I see people all the time that have like skin conditions like psoriasis mm-hmm. or rheumatoid mm-hmm. arthritis. And honestly, if many of those individuals were to go on a ketogenic diet, it shuts the inflammatory markers down. And we've got tons of evidence. So Rosalind has her experience, but we know there's several companies. The big one that's doing the research right now is Verda Health out of California. And they've got data from two to three years of individuals coming off their medications and reducing inflammation through a Mm -hmm. ketogenic diet. So we've got a question here, so from Tina. So you said to start off slow, and I've tried to cut out sugar and carbs altogether and end up with headaches. Is this sugar withdrawal? That is called the keto flu. So what happens in that, what you need to do is up your electrolytes. And you can either go to the health store and buy electrolytes, but an easy way of doing that is adding Himalayan salt, a pinch of Himalayan salt and lemon in your water. And that will bring up your electrolytes and that will help with the headaches. Wonderful, thank you. really important. And we have a question. Um, so someone says Michelin. So this gives me hope that I can become healthy again and get rid of my medication. Because Rosalind, you were on some medication as well, right? When this whole thing started? No, I wasn't. I actually was just on depressants. And, but you were, you were on, you were on the, the medication. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. I didn't have diabetes. I didn't have high blood pressure. Mine was more of a preventative, but yeah, I was on depressants. So do we have any other questions out there through the chat? Maybe I'll open up the window here so you can just see the folks that have been with us tonight. If you guys want to turn your uh, videos on. Just so Rosalind can see your faces. I think that's always fun as well. Hello, everybody. So who's from Bermuda? Hi, Shelly. (laughs) Got a few Bermudians here. Okay. I'm from Bermuda. (laughs) Hi, Carolyn. Tina Uh, is from Bermuda? Bermuda. Yes. Did you you reach out to me the other day on Facebook? No, I don't think so. Okay, somebody, it looked familiar. Okay. It looked like, yeah. Okay, well, I will tell you all this. I do have a keto kitchen. It's called Keto Yum Kitchen. I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram under Ketogenic Optimum Life. What was that again? Sorry, Keto. Ketogenic Optimum Life. Okay. And that's my Facebook page. And for... Um, Instagram, you just put BDA behind it and it will come up. 
And Rosalind poaches a lot, she posts a lot of pictures of her food, but also Rosalind, you've been starting to do some classes. I, I missed, wh where are you doing those classes on the weekend? At Bates. Um, Joshua Bates, it's once a month. Okay. I go to Joshua Bates um, down on 33 Middle Road. And um, I use their, their kitchen. Um, so the next time will be, let me look at this, the schedule. And just to let you know, Rosalind's food, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is, again, we won't get into all the meals, but to let you know, because in our class yesterday, we were talking about net carbs um, mm -hmm. and people that are gluten-free. So all keto food is generally gluten-free because, you know, gluten has a lot of carbs in it. But, you know, you can make homemade pizza. You can oh, make that's a, what, a Actually, that's, that's what I did last weekend at Bates. I did, um, hi, Carolyn. <laughs> I did um, pizzas. I did pizzas. I did red velvet cupcakes with icing. And I did a bread and butter pudding with chocolate chips. And that went over very well. Um, the first week, the first time I went there, I did um, chicken alfredo with broccoli and mushrooms and chicken fried cauliflower rice. So I will be there. May 27th from one to five. And I'm doing cheesecake cupcakes. And I'm not quite sure what I'm doing for the meals yet, but it will be up on my post the week before um, I go down. So. so it's great. It really is like Rosalind says, it's a lifestyle change. And one of the big things when you start cooking low carb and ketogenic, there are some tips to learn. And, you know, I've been through many blogs and I'm sure you have too, Rosalind. You watch yeah. a lot of these videos, but mm -hmm. learning from someone that's been through it um, because they'll tell you those tips. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to share this information and your grocery tours. I'll post more information about that as well because it yeah. can be confusing when you go in not knowing, you know, what bread or what flour do I buy or what sugar is good. Um, and so, you know, having a little tour around a grocery store can be very beneficial as well. Mm -hmm. I had someone recently that did a tour with me and she was like, but I'm eating healthy cereals. I really am. And she picked out the cereals. I said, read the ingredients. She was mortified. She says, oh, my gracious, I'm pre-diabetic. I'm going to be diabetic next week if I keep eating like this. You know, it. it it's something when you know about the nutritional value and what ingredients are in certain foods. I, I mean, something as simple as um, bone broth or, or, or um, chicken stock. You have different. You have different brands of chicken stock or, or chicken broth. But what's in those ingredients? So I, I teach people how to pick out things that are of a much healthier version when it comes to processed food. Yeah, it's wonderful. There's so much to learn. You know, keto can be very simple. Like if you eat whole foods and never had to step in, if you only went to the meat aisle and the veggie aisle, that could, keto can be that simple, okay? Mm -hmm. But then if you want to have a lot of fun, then you start looking around and then that's, mm -hmm. That's where, you know, the, the joy of the lifestyle begins. Yeah, and, and a lot of people think that it's not flavorful. You can use all sorts of seasonings. I Turmeric is one of my favorites. Curry is one of my favorites. Paprika. Cumin is one of my favorites. You know, it's so many. Coconut milk. Coconut cream. Oh, my goodness. It's like you can you can make a meal so simple out of simple whole foods. Um, heavy whipping cream, that is a staple in my house. You can have heavy whipping cream in your coffee, you can make desserts, you can, you can do so much, you can cook so much with just that one item. Or just, I have a two rods and it's usually on my list, my shopping list. If I want something like uh, my ice cream, I just pour the whipping cream on some berries, mm -hmm. you know, on, on kind of frozen berries. It's delicious. Yeah, yeah. So, it's so much you can do, yes. And it, it's, like I said, it's 
what we're looking at here with the ketogenic diet and, and next week, Rosalind, what they're going to do, they're going to share some of their food, what they eat and have the impact of their sugar. And then, you know, some of these hacks will come about. And then, so you can follow Rosalind because, you know, she can, you on her page, you'll be able to see what things are lower in carb, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to share those, those hacks kind of within the group as well, uh, because it's some, for us, you know, there's the small changes we can make. And then sometimes if we have a lot of health problems, we do have to make a major change. Mm -hmm. But the key things to, of doing it is one is getting educated and also being around a group of people that you can get support from, right? Mm -hmm. And I know if I tell someone to go see Rosalind to start off with her, her, her meals or get some nutritional counseling from them for coaching, then I know they're gonna be in good hands, right? Thank you. Um, because, you know, and she's lived it, you know, she's lived it. And we I all, it. Yeah. and you're here, you love to spread the message, Rosalind, because yeah. you felt so much better and you, you, you're probably here because you made that lifestyle change. Yes. Right. Yes. And, and that's and, exactly what it is because I feel it. I, I live it every day. So, you know, and, and I will tell even the, the, um, the full of figure persons here, I'm going to tell you this right now. I am very real when it comes to this journey. There are times I still look in the mirror and I think that I'm 300 pounds. It's a mind, you have to reprogram your mind. And it's a scary thought, but it's something that our bodies go through, our minds go through. And I try to help other people to go through it as well because it, it's, it's something called body dysmorphia that we do go through. And I try to teach people how to get through that. So it's a lot of things because of the size that I was, I, I know the journey oh so well. And it's always gonna be a journey. And look at her, isn't she beautiful? Like <laughs> you, you have to look at her on, on like more on her Instagram as well, but she's beautiful and look, she's glowing. Like to have that glowing face and glowing smile, and I just love it. I, I thank you so much, Rosalind. Thank you so much that you're here tonight to share with us all um, your story. Um, thank you for having me. This is wonderful. What I'm going to do, um, Dr. Keenan, I'm going to, I have a, a picture of my business card. I'm going to send it to you. So yes. if you want to, if you want to send it out. Yeah, I'll post it in the group. That's okay. Great. And I have, we have, there's one more question, then we'll I'll let everyone get off. Can you do, ah, oh, you're beautiful, Ross. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, can you do low carb and not fully ketogenic to get similar results? Okay, so low carb and ketogenic are different. Um, so with the low carb, that's something like 50, carb, 50 net carbs and up. Keep, in order for you to get into a ketogenic lifestyle, you have to go between 20 and 25 net carbs per day. So I would say um, it, they are different, but the results can be attainable on both sides. Thanks, Rosalind. And that's a wonderful question to ask as well. And again, this is where it also comes down to you as an individual which is why one approach may not work because like she, Rosalyn said, this needs to be your lifestyle. Think mm -hmm. of it as a lifestyle change, right? Mm -hmm. um, so super important to know that we're all at a different journey. We're all at different parts along the journey and mm -hmm. we're all gonna have bumps, you know, because we go up so far and then you come down and it's like, you know, a few le um, levels up on the ladder and you come down, but that's okay. It's better than just going straight down on that ladder, right? Mm -hmm. And so to, and to know too, we, you know, and we often talk about stalls when it comes to weight loss, but that's okay. You're there and you know, you never need to give up because what's the end? What, what's the purpose of giving up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And I always use the 80, 20 rule. Okay. 80% of the time you're doing what you have to do. 20% you don't. I'm not telling people I'm perfect. Cause I'm not. Cause let me tell you something. If I want something and I know I'm going to feel sick, but I'm going to eat it. You know, um, it doesn't happen often, but it happens. But because my body is so used to going into ketosis, I can get back into ketosis in two days. 
because my body is so used to it. But in the beginning of my journey, I dare not go off because I knew what I needed to do. But, you know, as you grow, you, you know, you like Dr. Keenan says, you know the different hacks to do to get back in. But and that's, use the 80 20 rule. And that's why, so being gentle with yourself is really important, but also having a clear intention in mind. You know, so that's one of the things I asked people in the group last week, kind of what their intention would be. Now, this is just our intention for two weeks, but beyond this, that will be your next step because mm -hmm. this is just kind of fun that we're able to see what's going on for this first two weeks. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to wrap that up. Thank you so much, Roslyn. Thank you for everybody okay. that, that came out tonight. And we'll share all your information about your food, uh, your cooking that you have um, at Joshua Bates, about your grocery store tours. And I'll share your um, business card as well if anyone wants to seek your help for health coaching. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.